Hello, this is Jay Deer speaking. I've got a few comments for you about the TMA that's coming up. The first TMA for M882, due on the 11th of December, so no need to panic yet, but that's about four or five weeks away. So you'll need to be thinking about it soon. I've got some principles that you need to stick to and a suggested process that you can adopt if you want to. And it's pretty generic, can apply to any TMA. It's a sort of process I've used for writing the TMAs for the courses where I've been a student for the OU. And I think it's good practice. So, the principles. Three principles. The first is, answer the question as it's written. It may sound pretty basic, but many people don't. They miss out part of a question, they think they've understood what the question is, and go and write something different, don't check back what the wording of the question is. So, check your answering what you've been asked. A couple of examples here. If you're asked to comment on A, B and C, then you need to comment on A, B, and C to get full marks. If you don't comment, if you only comment on A and C, you won't get full marks. There's also there's some key words that are used to ask you what to do in the questions. So things like describe, compare, contrast, evaluate. Those have meanings, and we're asking, we're looking for different sorts of responses for each of those questions. Look in the assignment booklet for M882. It's a good description of what we mean by those, what we expect to see in an answer for compare versus evaluate. We expect them different things. And finally, answer all parts of every question. Um, some people get to the stage, maybe you're a bit short on time, like most of us are. It's getting close to the time when you need to finish the TMA for handing, handing it in. Um, and you might not have started one or two parts of, of a question. Some people are tempted to go back and polish the things that they've been working on to try and get them really perfect. It's my advice to actually try and answer every part of every question. It's much easier to get two or three marks out of 10 or 15 by starting a question than trying to move up from the 10, or 15, the 10 marks you might have up to a complete 15. So try every part of every question is strong advice. So the second principle. Give references, use references. It's a postgraduate course, you're expected to be working in an academic style, giving references for the course materials, um, the reading, the, the case studies you'll be studying and reading for the TMA, any external reading, any diagrams you use that you might pull in. Um, so get ready to do that, which means during a reading of the course materials and the case studies, make a note of them. The style to use is the Harvard style, that's shown in the assignment booklet, um, pretty clear. Um, and word of advice, there's some very good uh, reference management tools available. I use something called Zotero, which is a plug-in for Firefox, but there's ones that work independently, like BibTeX and EndNote and many others. Some are free, some you pay for. Zotero is free. Um, so I use that. It means I can keep a very easy reference from a book. I can just you know, one click when you're looking at a book inside a browser, and you can download all the relevant information to create the footnote. Sorry, create the reference the citation in whatever format you want. So I use that. You need my suggestion. You use something similar. And now the third principle, um, stick to the word count. Uh, it's two and a half thousand words, plus ten percent, so it's not a hard, strict limit, but that doesn't mean four and a half thousand words, which is what I've had some people submit to me. And, you know, you will lose marks if you're significantly over the word count. So it's not going to help. Now, some people have said in the past, it's very difficult to stick within the word count and answer the question fully. There's lots of content that's necessary. I agree, it is a skill, it's something you have to work at, I've got some comments on how to do this in the next section, um, but you do need to stick to the word count. Some research done by a colleague of mine in the OU looked at you know, the length of answers that were over the word count compared to the marks that were given, and people who stuck to the word count tended to get slightly higher marks than people who went on longer. It's an approximate correlation. Certainly, going on longer, the ones I've seen, often have much irrelevant material in and doesn't actually gain marks. And you, know, you, won't, you won't get full marks if you're much over the word count. OK, so just a summary of those three points, and I'll put it the other way around here. Uh, here's what you need to do to lose marks. <laughs> you don't answer the questions as they're written, because you miss out some parts or miss out some questions, or you do a describe answer rather than a contrast answer. You don't give references. Guess what? You'll lose marks. And uh, you don't stick to the word count, as I've said. You'll lose marks. OK, so those are the principles those three principles. Uh, here's a suggested process that you could adopt. Up to you, use this process, something else, up, completely up to you. 
So the first step I suggest is to type out the questions onto your answer paper. The uh, reason for doing this is you actually have to read them thoroughly to type them into the answer paper. Uh, it means you have to read all parts of it, you have to understand what's being asked, you need to, it'll help you just to check what the question really is. Um, I do this, I typically put it in a different font or italic so it stands out a bit from my answer. And just a comment, this won't count against your word count. The word count is stuff you've written, if you've got written in the question as well, that doesn't count against your word count. Second step, for each section, you know, answer 1, part A, part B, part C, part D, and so on, um, work out a target word count. So if question 1A is worth 16 marks for a 2,500 word assignment, which is obviously 100 marks overall, that should be about 400 words. Maybe part B is worth 10 marks, should be about 250 words, and so on. That gives you a target to aim for, and so I strongly recommend you do that before you start writing, because then you know this section we're looking for about 400 words, 800 words, 200 words, 50 words, if it's a very small uh, mark score. So do it before you start writing. Third section, now you can start doing some writing. Um, work on one of the sections, pick one that you are familiar with or you've studied recently. Um, try and draft an answer within the word count, then go back and read the question again. Did the question ask you to compare something, or evaluate something, or describe something, or give examples of, or whatever else it might be? <clears throat> Did it ask you to comment on A, B, and C? Have you done that? So reread the question, write your answer. Um, I recommend you stick your references in as you're writing them. Um, if you're using one of the reference tools, it's very easy to just paste in the right formats and build up the references at the end of your assignment uh, while you're writing each particular section. Step four. Um, look at that section and edit it ruthlessly to be all within the word count or very close to the target word count. So go and look at it, reread the question. The question asks you to describe something. Have you done that or have you done something else? Um, chop out as much as you can to get within the word count. Just on this one section, so you might be looking at a 200 word section, which is quite short. You have to be quite disciplined to do it. When you've done that, um, Obviously, the next step is to repeat for all the other questions that you have to answer. So pick another one, work on that, go back and you know write it, review it, edit it to fit within the word count, uh, and so on. Um, obviously, repeat all the way through. Each time, checking your, your answering the questions. Check at the end, you're within the overall word count, and you've got your references neatly filed away uh, at the end of the document. Okay, so here's the suggested process as a whole. As a whole. Type out the questions into your answer paper, determine the target word count for each section, pick one section, read the question, try and answer it, edit that one section till you get down to the target word count, or very close, and then repeat until you're done. Okay, I hope that makes sense, I uh, hope it's useful. Um, and that's it for now, just a final comment, uh, just in case anyone's interested in how this was produced, software and hardware that was used, there's a slide at the end that shows this, but the simple answer is it's a Mac. Okay, thanks for your time.